Hey guys, I wanted to take a look at the Android M developer preview on my Nexus 5, but before I get started, I just wanted to mention again that this is a developer preview. So not all the features will be included. You will get instability and some incompatibility issues with apps. I heard that right now both Waze and Uber crash at the moment. So if you're thinking of using this as a daily driver, just be aware it may not be all smooth sailing. But yeah, straight off the bat, it pretty much looks like Lollipop. You can be forgiven to thinking this is Lollipop. It looks identical right now. Android M looks to build on top of Lollipop's material design rather than completely redesign it. But if we go into the About phone, you can see that I am on the developer preview. Android version is M right there. We can tap it a few times to get the M. There isn't really an Easter egg included right now. If you tap and hold, you get this little kind of symbol that looks like an Android guy shrugging. So maybe not even Google knows what they're going to do with it or, or name it properly yet. In terms of the Google Now launcher, the only real noticeable change is in the app drawer. You now have four icons at the top that seem to be your most recently used apps. And instead of scrolling left and right for your apps, it now scrolls up and down. You've also got the lettering on the side there so you can quickly see exactly the sections for your apps. If you want to scroll through your apps quickly by letter, you can do that by holding the bar on the right hand side. Or if you want to find a specific app, you can just search right at the top there. There's a search bar and your keyboard is brought up. You can just search, start searching for an application and it should be brought up very, very quickly. So I don't really know what to think of this right now. To be honest, I'm a Nova launcher kind of guy, so this probably won't affect me too much. You can't actually change that option though. Widgets is a similar story. It doesn't scroll left and right anymore. It now scrolls up and down. And when you get to a widget that has more than one option, for example, the Google Contacts application, you can scroll that horizontally to access the other options. Now let's move on to the sound and volume controls. And in Lollipop, this was a big discussion. A lot of people were confused. They kind of took out silent mode. And I can tell you a few things have changed here. So if we press the volume key, you can see the uh, notification volume. If you press that little arrow, you can now change the media volume and also the alarm volume. We've seen this in custom ROMs for years. It's now included in stock Android, so that's always a good thing. If you keep pressing volume down, you get to vibrate. If you press it again, yes, you now get to silent mode. You can see it brings up a prompt that says alarms only, so alarms will still work, but everything else will be silent. So this is basically silent mode reintroduced into Android M. You also have a do not disturb mode in your quick settings, and it's just a lot clearer now. If you press it, you'd see you have alarms only, which is pretty obvious what it does. It only allows alarms to come through. If you go to priority mode, there's little prompts that tell you exactly what they do. This won't, you won't be disturbed by sounds and vibrations, except from alarms, reminders, events, and you can also customize that. Or you can have total silence. And again, there's a little prompt that tells you it blocks all sounds, vibrations, including alarms. So it's just a lot clearer now than it was in Lollipop. And thankfully, we also have, like I said before, that silent mode back. So I'm really happy with that. If you do turn on that do not disturb mode in the quick settings, you get a little icon in your status bar that shows you you're in that mode. And that icon does change. So currently I'm in total silence mode, but if you change it to priority or alarms only, that icon will change as well. So it gives you a visual representation of exactly what you're in. Now, in terms of the settings here, again, it looks pretty much like Lollipop. There are a few additions that you have to go hunting for. For example, in the hotspot, you now have an area that says select AP band. One of the features of Android M is you can now have a five gigahertz Wi-Fi connect, uh, hotspot. That isn't available on the Nexus 5 right now. I'm not sure if that's a device limitation or if it's just not included in the preview, but it will be there. And if we jump into the do not disturb section in sound and notification, we can change exactly what priority mode allows. So if you want reminders and events to come through, you can set that or you can turn them off. You can also set specific contacts. We saw this in Lollipop, so not really too different here. But if we jump back one, we've got an automatic rule section and this is pretty cool. So you can actually set different options for weekends or weeknights. You can set the exact days you want this to happen. So right now it's Friday and Saturday. So you could have your device set to priority mode on only the weekend and it would automatically change back on your weeknight. So that's pretty cool. And you can also change the setting based on a calendar event as well. So if you have an event on your calendar, you can have it automatically change your device to total silence on that event. So those are some pretty cool options we didn't see in Lollipop. Now, if we dive into storage here, when I went into this, I kind of thought, hey, it looks like other stuff could be listed here. So I thought, why the hell not? I'll grab my on-the-go cable with my SanDisk USB drive in there, and I'll plug it in and see what happens. And 
you'll see that once it's plugged in, the device actually recognizes it and it's listed in the storage section. You also get a notification in your status bar. It comes up as a SanDisk USB drive. You can actually eject it. And this is without any other application. So this is just inbuilt into the OS now. You can see you can eject or explore and you can actually view that drive. So maybe this is something to do with SD cards. Maybe Google is going to be a lot nicer to SD cards and, and USB devices in the future, especially considering Android M has the USB-C support which we know is going to be really cool for a USB drive so this is really awesome to see built into the OS it's going to make it much easier to view files on your USB drive or any external media for that matter so yeah the battery section pretty much looks the same but there's slight differences when you actually go into the individual apps for example if you dive into screen you can see ignore uh, optimizations and it gives you little tips of how to save battery life from uh, from this source for example the screen said reduce screen brightness and uh, the graph always stays there as well but not too much to talk about in the battery area diving into apps this is where it gets a little bit more interesting in android m so if we just select chrome right now it looks a little bit different to how it did in lollipop it shows you storage data permissions notifications the launch by default stuff and how much battery life it's used since the last full charge so that could be kind of interesting but the biggest thing is app permissions you no longer need root or any special applications this is built into android m be aware that if you do turn off a permission for an application that isn't supported by android m it could break the app entirely but this is a good step in having more control over your individual applications and what data they have access to jumping into the advanced section you can see there's a section that says domain urls and there's a few apps that use this already they talked about this in the google io basically as an example it had a twitter link instead of bringing up the open with script it just opened it in twitter directly ignore optimizations i believe has something to do with the doze feature on android m which is meant to save battery life but you can see google play services download manager and google play store are all locked to ignore battery optimizations so i'm not sure if that's going to change or if that's because of google cloud messaging or anything like that but I don't know. There's also a memory section here. You can see at the top it says good performance. It shows you how much RAM is being used by each application for how long as well. You can change the duration if you go to that overflow menu. Uh, these are probably more developer tools than kind of, you know, the normal user tools or anything like that. Tap and pay right now is literally a screenshot. It does absolutely nothing on this build. So we'll just leave that as it is. There's a few additions in the developer options. For example, you now have a theme section and that has light, dark and automatic. And this basically changes the settings. It doesn't change anything else like the launcher. If we check that out here, you can see the app drawer is still white. Google now on the left is still white. I'm not sure if this is going to be a system wide change in a later build. But yeah, it's kind of nice to see Google giving you an option to change certain theming aspects. We'll just go ahead and change that theme back to light for now. But above that option is system UI tuner. If you turn that on, it adds an option right at the bottom here which right now only holds quick settings, but it basically allows you to customize and move these around and even delete and add certain aspects. Now, this was a little bit buggy for me. I'm not sure if this will even be included in the last build or if it's a super alpha uh, feature, but you can see once I tried to add one after deleting one, we had a system UI crash and I just don't think I can get that back anymore. But I do hope Google does something with this because it'd be great to customize certain aspects of the system UI, especially the quick toggles, which, you know, everyone uses different toggles. And if you're wondering, no, Google's now on tap feature is not included in this build, as you can see right there. It's a really cool feature. If you haven't checked this out, look at the Google I.O. footage of it. It's going to be awesome for Google now. It's, it's so cool. It's hard to explain even, but it's just an awesome feature that I can't wait to try out. There's slight differences in the animations when opening up an app. But other than that, this is pretty much all I found so far on the developer preview of Android M. So yeah, definitely a refinement over Lollipop rather than a complete overhaul, which is not bad in my book. I don't think they needed to overhaul it, but let me know what you think. Peace out.